of them were um, isolated with Putin and had a dramatic effect on his psyche. Can you speak to that a little bit and why the COVID timeline in many ways was kind of an important development in you know, what we saw in 2021, as well as just the general development of Putin and his psyche? I must correct you. He, he was um, uh, together with Kovalchuk only. Forsen was not there. But uh, but you're right. Those two two men are very important for for Putin because um, they are close friends since 90s. And you, you may imagine uh, a person from very humble and very poor family, but uh, raised in in St. Petersburg, um, comes back from from GDR to the collapsed Soviet Union. Um, and he he's a deputy mayor, and he meets um, two guys from very privileged families, uh, Kovalchuk and Forsenka. Their, their fathers are renowned Soviet academicians. They're very famous historians, um, intellect, intellectuals. And uh, Vladimir Putin... Uh, wanted to be closer to them. They they were very important figures for, for him. They were kind of moral authorities because they were obviously much more uh, privileged, much more successful than, the, than his father was. Uh, and those two historians played a very crucial role in, in, uh, in shaping of Putin's personality and sh- in shaping of his approach to Russian history. And, and there is a huge irony that there's... Uh, what what uh, topics were they uh, specializing in? Uh, Kovalchuk, the sinner, um, special was specializing in the history of Crimea and city of Sebastopol. That that is the main, uh, the most important Russian uh, naval base in Crimea. Uh, and Forsenka, the sinner, um, was um, specializing in history of the United States and especially the Cold War. So he was writing books about uh, American conspiracy and CIA-led conspiracy against Soviet Union. So no wonder why they shaped his approach to global politics in this way. And it was especially interesting that uh, back in 2014, when Putin decided to occupy Crimea, uh, that was a shock, that was a surprise for many uh, Russians because there was no popular demand. That was not an issue discussed by uh, by many Russians for for years. No one considered Crimea to be cradle of Russian civilization, to be to be a sacred territory that uh, needed to be uh, brought back home. It was uh, th- that idea was not shared by by many people. Uh, uh, that's why it was so surprising that 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 was uh, put, uh, Putin's personal belief. And now we know the reason for that. Uh, that's because of the in, the personal influence of uh, academician Kovalchuk. So let's cycle to the other end of the aisle with Ukraine and Zelensky. I think the human psychological aspect, as you were just highlighting the development of Putin from the 80s to the 90s and so on, is incredibly interesting and insightful in understanding these leaders. We have someone on Ukraine, the current leader who had to step up at a time when his country was being invaded, who was originally a comedian, was playing the president on TV, and now suddenly finds himself in many ways in front of the entire world, standing against Russia in one of the most violent conflicts we've seen in the modern day. So how do you think Zelensky has developed over the years working with and against Russia? And how do you think that reflects on who we see today? Mm, yeah, it was it's it was very interesting for me just to to follow his um, his life. I, w- I was interviewing uh, his childhood friends, his uh, his partners in business, uh, other actors who were working with him um, in the film industry, and he has really made a very um, a, an enormous development, an enormous way, uh, uh, starting as a just um, participant of a very popular TV show, very popular TV show on Russian television. Uh, it's very funny to to see how different his humor his humor uh, used to be twenty years ago, because uh, all the jokes he uh, uh, he could afford himself uh, would seem completely inappropriate and very insulting 
for Ukraine today. So it's it's just watching how how Zelensky's humor has changed. It's uh, it's clear uh, that Ukraine as a nation uh, has changed in completely. Uh, that during all those years, uh, the feeling of national pride and, and national identity has changed a lot. And many Ukrainians uh, could not could not say that uh, Ukraine was a Soviet colony 30 years ago. Uh, they did not consider the, themselves to be colonized uh, because they were under great Soviet influence and uh, almost the whole country was 100% Russified. There was uh, Russian television, Russian culture uh, dominating everywhere. And that's why um, many Ukrainians considered them, themselves to be not so, uh, not so bright, not so talented, not so uh, deserving to, to have a bigger place. And actually the, the maximum they, they uh, uh, could, could dream of was going to Moscow and uh, achieving some success on, on Russian television. And during the 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 um, during the nineties, uh, that city situation started changing, and uh, it's clear that uh, uh, Vladimir Zelensky might represent very very good symbol of that uh, development. Because in uh, year two thousand and three, just one year before the Orange Revolution, he made his personal choice. He decided to to quit Russian. Uh, uh, television to uh, to leave Moscow and he came back to Ukraine because he believed that that uh, he belongs there he he should work for Ukrainian audience he he should work for Ukrainian television and it was not a political choice it was not it was just a coincidence that uh, the same time uh, uh, U- uh, Ukrainian Orange Revolution happened and Ukraine as a nation made the same the same choice they. Uh, they wanted to be an independent nation. They wanted to be a liberal, democratic, uh, European nation, um, and it's it's very it's very symbolic that that um, as a president, uh, Vladimir Zelensky is he represents the third generation of Ukrainian politicians uh, because when uh, Soviet Union collapsed, the first genera- the first presidents of Ukraine were. Obviously, members of com- former members of Communist Party, and they spent most of their lives uh, living in Soviet Union, being members of Communist Party. Then uh, the, that generation changed, and here we had the second generation, uh, former members of Soviet Komsomol. Komsomol is a uh, young Communist League. It was just a huge youth organization in, in the Soviet Union. And several consecutive presidents of Ukraine, uh, who were not members of Communist Party because they were young enough, but they were members of Komsomol. So Zelensky is the third generation. He has never, he didn't spend most of his life in Soviet Union. He can he is not associate. He, he doesn't associate himself with with the Soviet regime, with Communist Party, or even with Komsomol. He doesn't share um, any Soviet um, um, prejudice. He doesn't view Ukraine as. Uh, as Soviet, Soviet colony, and and that's very symbolic. He represents the population of Ukraine today. He uh, he is purely a uh, symbol of that um, dignity of of Ukrainian nation. And on the contrary, uh, I, I I must um, admit that in Russia we still have the first generation. We still have communists because Vladimir Putin used to be member of Communist Party, and actually most of his life, still, uh, e- even thirty years after after collapse of the Soviet Union, most of his life he uh, he spent as a member of Communist Party. 